Over the last 24 hours, Bitcoin has seen a strong breakout of the four week long downtrend. Are the bulls finally reclaiming control? Let's go ahead and find out. Okay, Miguel team, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. In today's video, we are taking a look at the short term price action, the weekly candle close, Bitcoin dominance, the total cryptocurrency market cap, and the macro charts. Before we do get into it, smash that like button, hit that comment button, and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos of Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical, and the structural information. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is what you're interested in, join us on Telegram. It is the first link down below. You'll get access to charts, updates, videos, educational posts, news events, and everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency with Bitcoin and the relevant economic news. If you're interested in taking your trading to the next level, you can join us on our VIP channel within these 700 members. We do have a sale at the moment that has around six spots left. If you're interested, go ahead and find out more information via our links or contact me by clicking my name. Without further ado, let's dive on in. So taking a look at the recent 24 hours of price action, and we'll come back to this in more detail in just a moment, we can see Bitcoin was able to break through its short-term horizontal resistance around 62,000, as well as the major four-week-long downtrending diagonal resistance that we have been under since June 1st. This is the first sign of some real strength for Bitcoin for a very long time. In fact, this bounce has occurred and this breakout has occurred from the major $60,000 support level, which we've been discussing as a critical level for the bulls to remain above, which again has now been defended. And we do have that weekly candle close occurring in three minutes time. Moving over to the market data before we get into Bitcoin, 24 hour volume, is up 50%, sitting at 77 billion. 24 hour liquidations up 183%, sitting at 98 million. Of the 98 million in liquidation, 64 have come from shorts, 34 have come from longs. Moving over to the broader markets, the DXY is showing some weakness over here. Again, we had the breakout on the RSI, we had that unsustained breakout, the price action had not followed through, indicating a possible exhaustion occurring around this level of resistance. Once more, if we do see a DXI correct over here, we could see targets of 102 to 103 or even 101. Downward movement here for the DXI would be exceptionally bullish for Bitcoin, exceptionally bullish for the traditional asset market. However, if we do see that DXY clamber its way back over this resistance, we could see some blood in the broader markets. However, until then, we are underneath this eight month long downtrend. And if we take a look at Bitcoin, we are on an eight month long uptrend. So we have that correlation, that inverse correlation between these assets as a degree of confluence. Moving again over to the broader markets, the S&P 500, looking pretty decent over here, more or less opening that weekly candle slightly red. We can see very, very slightly red. The opening price was around $10.00. No, not even that $2 higher than the current price. Once more, we are expecting directional continuations higher over here. We can see we do have a bit of a gap in the VRPV forming, which could tell us worst case scenario, we may see a correction back down to 5,400. But again, even if we do see those corrections, we are expecting the macro trajectory of price action to remain intact, meaning we are expecting macro continuations higher. The only way we would expect that to be invalidated if we take this prior high and we drop underneath it. That would be an indication of high time frame weakness as if we look at all the prior structures forming we have our lows we have a higher lows we have a higher lows higher lows higher lows we have never dropped below these prior high points when we had this change of characters occurring in the price structure so this would be an indication of weakness in the high time frame trend if we were to break underneath that until then the macro outlook is bullish that is it for the broad markets, that is it for the DXY, and that is it for our preliminary update. Before we get into our extended Bitcoin analysis, go ahead and check out the two exchanges we trade on. We'll pin that down below and we'll put a little add in so you can check it out. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two major exchanges we use on this channel, BitUnix and Bing X. If you sign up via my links down below, you'll get access to 15% lifetime discounts on all of your trading fees, including up to $5,000 in bonus trading rewards. 
Phoenix is a global no KYC exchange offering access to absolutely everyone from every country on the globe. Whether that be trading spot or futures, there are over 200 trading pairs with access to 125x leverage, making it the perfect exchange for day traders. If you are interested in another option, we have Bing X. Bing X, as like BitUnix, has access to over 200 spot pairs, large liquidity pools, and 125x leverage. However, they do have a pending KYC regulation, and they don't offer services to the USA, the Netherlands, and Canada. So go ahead and check out those exchanges via the links down below, and join us where we trade on BitUnix and Bing X. Let's get back into the video. Okay team, here we are jumping back into Bitcoin, taking a look at that weekly chart. And as we can see, we have that weekly candle close in 30 seconds. We are watching this candle like a hawk over here, but it is very, very, very likely we are going to be closing above that critical $60,000 uh, support level. Unless we see a nuke level candle in the next 16 seconds, we can almost validate and confirm that as a fact. What we are looking at over here is going to be what is a very, very bullish close? This is a particularly bullish close that shows that we had a long wick toward the downside, indicating we had a period of massive selling pressure, a period of massive bullish uh, bearish strength, but that was being able to be eaten back up during the last little bit of the month, showing that bulls are really jumping in to defend this $60,000 level, and there is still demand at this critical level of support. Furthermore, with this weekly close we've just seen, we have been able to sustain above that bull market uptrend represented by the diagonal trend line. So all in all, we had a pretty decent weekly candle close. We couldn't have asked for anything better as the only thing that we were really looking for for the bulls to remain intact was that we were to see that close of 60,000. A close above 60,000 again goes to validate this area of 60,000 as a critical area of support. And once more, we do have these areas of confluence developing between that bull market uptrend and that horizontal support level at around that 60,700 region at the end of July. So by the end of this month, we will have broken upwards through this range or we will have broken below our bull market uptrend. We're going to find out that answer by the end of this month. The reason being, once again, if we drag that diagonal trend line through the 60k region, you can see it meets around the 22nd to the 29th of July. So we have that time frame between those dates to make a direction move upwards, otherwise we pose the risk of breaking below this bull market uptrend. Something very interesting to pay attention to. But as of right now, a fantastic weekly close. Again, <clears throat> while we sustain above 60,000, we are technically bullish. We are looking for macro directional continuations higher with the $72,000 resistance being the trigger point to validate a directional continuation. If we zoom out, we are still very much in a horizontal consolidation on the higher time frame. This is going to be the horizontal consolidation we are currently in. We'll discuss this in just one moment. As we can see, we have had deviation to the top side, deviation to the low side of the range. The current correction remained as support. If we're looking at the 12 hour candles above that $60,000, $61,000 support level, and now again, for us to see directional continuations higher, we would need to break above that buy side liquidity at 72,000 to see that directional continuation higher. Until then, we are very much still within this horizontal range we've been in for now nearly four months. Absolutely insane. The biggest horizontal consolidation we've seen in Bitcoin ever in a bull run, which is absolutely crazy stuff. But moving back to the weekly, that is what we're really looking for over here from a technical perspective. Again, our moving average based indicators are showing signs of weakness. We have seen the price action break into the bull market support band. We have seen the price action break down from the MAMTF uh, indicator. We are seeing these uh, moving average based indicators, particularly our smaller time frame moving average based indicators, our fives, our sevens, our thirteens, start to converge downwards, which is indication of overall exhaustion. But when we apply context context to the price action, we can see that this exhaustion is more of a representation of the shifting between periods of massively increased volatility to periods of strong horizontal accumulation or consolidation, which leads to weakness or exhaustion if we're looking at moving average base indicators, because the shift between periods of massively increased volatility to massively decreased volatility reads as exhaustion, it reads as these indicators starting to compress and converge to the price action, 
which is a representation of decreasing volatility and overall weakness. But when we apply our contextual analysis, our horizontals, our diagonals, our demand zones, our supply levels, we can see that Bitcoin is very much a similar uptrend. So let's quickly touch on that and then jump into the short term. If we look at the current uptrend for Bitcoin, this is going to be the uptrend. This is our bull market uptrend. Again, if we look at this as an eight month long trend, the DXY has been in an eight month long downtrend. So we have that inverse correlation over there. We can say for a fact that while Bitcoin remains above the bull market uptrend, the trajectory of price action is upward. We are expecting directional continuations upwards. If we fail to sustain this trend line, we could see corrections to 52,000 as that is where the first a uh, little bit of a mountain on that VIP is after our significant gap. We'll come back and discuss that on a short term analysis in just a moment. Moving over to the total market cap here now, guys, the total market cap is looking great. We can see another fantastic weekly close over here for the total market cap. Once again, the critical level for the total is going to be the 2.13 uh, to $2.2 trillion level. This is going to be the yearly level of resistance or what we will call it, the dead cap bounce high for the total before mass capitulation to bear market bottoms. Okay, so we can see we've sustained this level now for a, a multitude of months with another strong, long, low side wick candle printing at this level of support. To keep it nice and simple, guys, while we are above this support, we are bullish for cryptocurrency. While we are below this support, we are bearish. This is just a representation of the entirety of the cryptocurrency market cap. This is a really good indication of the whole market as a whole, the strength of the market. Moving over to the total three, and then we'll jump into the short term. We can see the total three is showing some indications over here, which is good, but we are still seeing a little bit of weakness, which we discussed. First and foremost, if we take a look at our RSI, we can see we are still watching for potential deviation a little bit lower. We would like to see a break of that downtrend on the RSI, which would indicate a positive momentum shift and would tell us that all coins are regaining high time frame strength with directional continuations higher. If we clear that prior high point, we could see a strong directional continuation up for all coins as represented by our annotations on the chart. If we take a look from a structural perspective, we can see we are respecting this overall up over here, bouncing around that level, and most importantly, bouncing from our prior sell side liquidity, which is our change of our uh, change of character over here to break down, which is a critical area of support, which has confluence with that uptrend. So we have a double confluence area of support over here, which increases the probability of a potential bounce. For old coins to bleed, we would need to see this trend line lost. While we are above this trend line, old coins do have a chance to regain some strength. It might take some time, but they are definitely still overall bullish. Now, this may change from altcoin to altcoin. Again, the total three is a reflection of all money, excluding Ethereum and excluding Bitcoin. We have some altcoins doing fantastic and some altcoins looking like an absolute cat a catastrophe. So again, it depends on the coin you are looking at. But overall, the total three is looking decent. Moving over to Bitcoin, guys, we can see on the short term, We've had that breakout. So let's dive into the short term charts momentarily and then zoom out to the higher time frame. So as we said in yesterday's video, we had our range low as represented by this level right over here. And we had our range high as represented by this level right over here. What we saw over the last 24 hours was a nice breakout of that range high, facilitating a move to around 63,000. We had a nice solid bounce from this local low, printing a continuation through that resistance. So that's the short term, it is looking very, very good. If we zoom back out to the high time frame and chuck on some of the indicators, we can see on the four hour chart, we've actually broken through the lower band and the midline of the Gaussian channel indicator. This is a good indication of a reversal developing. When we see the price action underneath the Gaussian channel, we are in a strong downtrend. When we break the lower band of the Gaussian channel, we can see an initial indication of bearish exhaustion. When we break out the midline, this is an indication of a reversal. And when we break the upper band, this is an indication of a full shift into bullish strength. So we are actually building our way up over here, developing strength as we go. And overall, this looks like a solid breakout for now. If we do take a look at another indicator such as the 50 EMA, we have broken above the 50 EMA for the first time since we had the CPI flash rally. Again, the CPI flash rally, as we know, was 
was a massive, massive point of major manipulation. We had the CPI come out, we had FOMC pushing it back down. Absolutely wild stuff. But since then, we have been able to sustain now a four hour close above that 50 EMA. If we look at the 50 EMA, which is that red line, it also converges with that downtrend. So we have that confluence over there suggesting we are going to see that continuation higher. So while we sustain above this diagonal downtrending resistance, we are technically developing a short term uptrend. Now, whether or not the short term uptrend will sustain and continue higher is a question we'll answer in just a moment, but it's more or less what the trend line represents and what it means. This would tell us for the first time we have since the start of June, essentially, we have been or now we are in a potential position which could actually facilitate a proper reversal for Bitcoin. Furthermore, while we remain above this downtrending trend line, the probability of a loss of 60,000 becomes significantly less because we do now have that $62,000 horizontal support acting as a base of support. If we do zoom out ever so slightly, we can see we are actually coming to retest a pretty important short term resistance here, which will go ahead and draw that horizontal level in right over here which is around that $63,000 region. If we take a look at the price action, we saw rejections from this point until we saw that change of character and break through into a continuation. And if we look at the recent price action, even back to around the 22nd of June, we saw an initial bounce from that level before breaking back below it, only to result in a strong correction downward. So you can see the pattern over here. We broke above that level of resistance. We saw a strong continuation upwards. We broke below that same level of support. We saw a strong continuation downwards. So this is how we go ahead and identify trigger points. So we would identify this level, this level of resistance at 63.2 to 63.4 as a directional short-term trigger for Bitcoin's trend to continue if we were to break above it. So if we do see a break above this level, this will be a strong indication we're going to see a directional continuation potentially to the POC or at least into this short-term resistance range for Bitcoin. While if we do remain below this level, we do have a risk to come back down to retest 62, retest this downtrend, or even see a potential fake out and correction lower. So the grass, or should I say, we are not out of the woods yet for Bitcoin. This breakout is by no means a indication we are going to the range high. It is by no means the bulls are fully back in control, but it is the best sign we have seen for a long time. It's a great start, and it is a great indication that at least the buyers are willing to defend 60,000 as we speak. If we zoom out again, guys, if we do want to see those directional continuations, this is what it's all about. If we want to see those directional continuations, we're talking up to the 70, up to the $80,000 region, we need to break out of this horizontal resistance. So let's go ahead and just zoom back out a little bit, uh, delete all those drawings over here. For us to get that continuation up to 80, up to 85, the range high needs to break. It is simple as that. If we want to see the 52 region, the range low needs to break. Okay, it is literally as simple as that. You can see if we zoom out, the gaps on the VIP are on, are on both sides. Obviously, we have a gap here because we have a strong period of volatility. Okay, we've not came back down to refill that gap yet. And on the upside, obviously, this is price discovery, meaning we have no historical price data above that region of 73,000. Both areas facilitate a period of massive volatility as the historical orders are non-existent or very few. That will facilitate a period of immense volatility if we were to see the price action reach either of those regions. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a fantastic day. We'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video. See you then.